Okay, Eat It Nation, today we're going to do some Dutch oven loving. We're going to take and make chicken stew with some Italian sausage, a little bit of ham, some celery, potatoes, some bell pepper, different colors, an onion, green beans, corn, a little chicken stock, and I'm already pre-boiling my carrots because it just takes carrots so, so long uh, to cook. So what we're going to do, we're going to season up this chicken and the uh, sausage. We're going to take it out to the grill. I got it heating up right now. I'm going to go ahead and grill them up and then when that's done, I'll be back and I'll show you how to put all this together. Okay, we have the meat all grilled off. We're going to take and put some butter down here in this Dutch oven. And what we're going to do, we're going to try to caramelize these vegetables up. I cut them up pretty thick. Um, and we're just going to drop them down in here with the butter. About a medium. Drop this stuff down in here. You know, let this stuff caramelize in there. back on for a minute let the temperature come up on that this was a real a pretty short cook um, the, the temperature on the uh, cooker got up I don't know around 3 or 350 but it really doesn't matter because we opened it with the lid or we cooked it with the lid up so we just basically looking if we want to get it done we want to caramelize the sausage just a little bit we're going to chop the uh, sausage up and we're going to uh, pull the chicken and then that'll go in there my carrots are done uh, I've got some potatoes to peel, and I guess when we get time for that, when we got to start putting it all together, uh, we'll be back. Okay, I thought I'd show you real quick what I'm going to do with this chicken. We're just going to pull it, and it just basically you just take a fork, put in it, and just start pulling on it with another fork. Pretty simple. And you can see it's tender and juicy, and it's done. Um, when it was on the grill, I'm going to check the temp. And <laughs> They're just boneless, skinless chicken breast, and it took them, I don't know, 15 minutes. I did one side and then did the other. You just want to get a little char and stuff on it, and it just adds a little bit of extra flavor. And then uh, it's just a matter of sitting here and kind of pulling it apart with a fork. So I wanted to show you that. we be back in just a second. All right, this is what our veggies are doing down inside the Dutch oven. And it's just butter. The veggies cut up minus the potatoes. Um, I put a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of garlic, and that's it. So, we're going to let these go for a little bit, let those onions turn translucent, and then we'll be putting it together. Okay, it's time to put all this together. We got our veggies uh, all sauteed down. We're going to fill in the ham. That's a pre-cooked ham, so this is our chicken and sausage. These are our carrots. Now, I, I pre-boiled these, and the reason I do that is because it takes carrots. Anybody that's ever cooked a lot, it, it takes carrots a long time to cook, so this is only really going to have to cook maybe, I'm, I'm thinking an hour, hour and a half out there on the grill. So, I want to give my carrots a little bit of a head start, that way they'll be soft. Potatoes, now I left my potatoes in fairly good sized chunks. If you don't like that, you can cut them up any way you like, it's up to you, you're the one eating it, I'm the one eating this, so I can cut them up like I like. Now here's our green beans, I drained these. Same with the corn. I drained the corn. And then we're going to put in a container of chicken stock. Now we're going to let this uh, simmer out there on the uh, 
in the grill, and I'll show you that setup here in a little bit. When I get this out there, I'll, I'll take the camera out and I'll show you what we've got going on out there. Um, get everything stirred up. Looks like uh, we need a bit of water. It's going to simmer down quite a bit. Um, let's add a little bit more garlic powder. A little bit of pepper. Okay. Okay, I had to go do the, dig this out of the fridge. I forgot to uh, get it out. But we're going to use about that much chicken base. Be careful with this stuff. You'll end up with something that's way too salty and over seasoned. So that ought to do it. So I'm going to take this out. I'm going to set it down in the, uh, in the cooker. And then I'm going to bring the camera out. And I'll show you what it looks like inside there. And then we'll go from there. See you in a minute. Alright, I'm out here at the grill and I really don't have any coals underneath of the pot, but I do have them all the way around it. You really can't tell. I'll try to get you a picture, but see the coals all the way around. But we're gonna leave that set like that. I don't know, an hour, hour and a half. I'm gonna come out and check it about every half hour to make sure that needs some more liquid added to it. And then after that we're gonna put some homemade biscuits on top of it. Throw some coals on top of the lid, and it's going to be good. Okay, this is going to be our biscuits for the top. I covered how to do these in another video. This is a double batch. So, it's actually four cups of uh, self-rising flour, a half a cup of shortening, and a cup and a half of whole milk. So I figured instead of making you have to go and hunt my other video down, I'd give you another lesson on how to make homemade biscuits. They're real simple to do. Now the first thing we're going to do is uh, cut this shortening into the flour, which is just a fancy name for me. And break it up, try to get it spread around inside the flour. And you gotta take your time, be gentle. If not, you'll end up with a tough biscuit. got to do this before you add the milk. Don't put all three things in there. You need to do it just like I just did it. And we're going to add the milk. And that's a cup and a half of whole milk. And then we're just going to stir this in and fold it in from the edges. Concerned if it's too wet or too dry because you can add a little bit more flour or a little bit more milk as you need at the end. The biggest thing is just don't go in there, don't go 
crazy with it. It's not like that. So. Seems to be blending in there really good. We're going to take these and put on top of the uh, uh, the chicken stew we've got out there on the grill. And we'll throw some uh, coals on the lid. And what we'll end up with is a basically a, a biscuit crust on top. looking pretty good. Now we gotta get our fingers into it and finish mixing it up. It's pretty easy. Just get your hands in there and start pressing it together. Done here, we're gonna have a, a little big ball of dough, I suppose, is what it's gonna be. Like I said, this is a double batch, it's a pretty big batch here. But you need this much in order to cover the whole topping there with the Dutch oven. And they're going to be really good. It's kind of a combination between a homemade biscuit and a uh, dumpling. Because it sits down on top of that liquid. And the bottom half of the biscuit actually tastes like a dumpling. And the top half is uh, will be done like a biscuit. Now, these are looking a little dry. I may end up having to add some milk here and keep working it. When I add milk, uh, it's just a very little bit. You'll see if I have to. It might come around. We'll see. say just a little bit of milk. I mean just a little bit of milk. Add milk and add flour and add milk and add flour. And I mean that was just a little bit of milk and I'm telling you what it made a world of difference. Just about right right now. So this went from being uh, too dry to being just about what we're looking for. And I just added, I mean that was that was probably only a couple tablespoons of milk that I added to it. So all right. I think our biscuit dough is uh ready to go we're just gonna wait until it's time to put it in the in the Dutch oven
for that. Uh, we'll be back and I'll show you how I do that. So we'll be right back. Okay, we're just a little over an hour into this thing, probably an hour and 20 minutes, and it's ready. You see that's boiled down pretty good. You don't want to do it clear dry, but I mean, the potatoes are soft. It's ready for us to put the biscuits on it. So that's what we're going to do right now. I'm going to take, let's put these up. Flatten them out a little bit. You want to make sure you got enough that's going to cover the whole thing. Which is why we made a double batch. You wanted enough to they would cover the whole top of this. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and cover this up. This is going to be so good. And don't worry, if, I've done this in the winter time and done it in the oven. Put the oven on 350 and uh, put this in there and let it boil with a lid on it. And then after you put your biscuits on, you put it on uh, broil. And it's going to do the same thing that uh, we're going to do just in a second with uh, some charcoal. Because we're going to put this back in the cooker. Put the lid on it, of course. And when you put your lid on it, you want to make sure that uh, you're covering up the vent holes. When we set this back down in there, I've got another chimney with about, I don't know, 10 or 15 pieces of charcoal in it, we're going to put that on the lid and that's what's going to finish this up and cook our uh, biscuits on top for us. So I'm going to take put this back in the smoker and then I'm going to show you what it looks like when I dump the coals on it. See you in a minute. Okay, here we go. We got about, I don't know, maybe 15 coals. I'm going to dump them on the lid here. That's why I make a few extras because some of them fall off. But you see kind of what we got going. I'm going to spread those around a little bit more even. In about 15 or 20 minutes, I'm going to show you what that looks like. Okay, it's been a half hour since uh, I put the coals on the top of it. We're going to open this up. We're going to look at it at the same time and let's see what our what our biscuits look like on top. Oh, they look good. All right, so there's what we got. It probably took, uh, at the most, maybe two hours to prep. And I'm telling you, if you try this, you're going to love it. You're going to impress anybody that you cooked before. So, uh, it is what it is. It's time to eat it. All right, here we go. We're going to dig into this. So good. Yeah, good yes. Easy yes. This is so good. Like I said, the uh, the biscuits they end up being like dumplings on the bottom, biscuits on the top. And you can season this, do whatever. If you notice, I don't really give you a whole lot. This is more about technique, I guess, than it is. Uh, no, I'm telling you exactly what you need to do because you know what you like. Cook it like you want and follow what I do and it'll come out just like this. Until next time, we'll see you. All right, we're gonna talk about this cook just a little bit more. Um, I've, I've done this recipe and I've done it all on the stove top and in the uh, uh, oven. You know, it's up to you and what you have. If you don't have a Dutch oven, you can pull this off in any kind of pot that's uh, uh, able to go into the oven. Uh, the
cooker, I kept it right at 350. Once it went in there, it did an hour, and then after that, I put about 15 coals on the top, so I'm fell off. So, I mean that. But you put those on the top, and that'll cook your biscuit. Um, it really went really well, and it tasted really good. You really need to try this. Uh, before I put the biscuits on top, uh, taste tested it, and I put a little bit of seasoning salt in it. Um, you just, you know, season it to what you like, and then put your biscuits on top. And uh, I think you, I think you really like this one. You'll see you next time.